In a world where attention is increasingly fragmented, millions are searching for solutions to improve focus, reduce stress, and manage conditions like ADHD. Among the most intriguing claims circulating online is that a specific sound frequency, 852 hertz, can dramatically enhance concentration, relieve anxiety, and even help manage attention disorders. These videos and audio tracks have garnered millions of views on YouTube and TikTok, with comment sections filled with testimonials claiming life-changing results. But is there any scientific truth behind these claims? Or is 852 hertz just another wellness trend based more on wishful thinking than evidence. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of sound frequencies to separate fact from fiction and discover what science really says about 852 hertz and its effects on the brain. The 852 hertz phenomenon. If you've searched for focus music or ADHD solutions online, you've likely encountered videos with titles like 852 hertz awakens intuition, removes fear and worry or 852 hertz for enhanced concentration and ADHD relief. These videos have collectively amassed tens of millions of views, with many claiming this specific frequency can transform your cognitive abilities. The 852 hertz frequency is often presented as part of the solfeggio frequencies, a set of specific tones claimed to have various healing properties. Proponents suggest that 852 hertz specifically resonates with the third eye chakra, helping to enhance intuition, improve mental clarity, and return listeners to spiritual order. The comment sections of these videos are filled with apparent success stories. This completely changed my ability to focus, writes one user. As someone with ADHD, this frequency helps me concentrate better than my meditation claims another. But before we examine whether 852 Hertz actually delivers on these promises, we need to understand where these claims originated and what this frequency actually is. Understanding Sound Frequencies to evaluate claims about 852 hertz, we need to first understand what sound frequency actually means. Sound travels in waves, and frequency measures how many wave cycles occur per second, measured in hertz. For context, humans typically hear frequencies between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Different frequencies create different pitches. Low frequencies produce bass tones, while high frequencies create treble sounds. For reference, middle C on a piano is approximately 262 hertz. The 852 hertz frequency falls in the higher middle range of human hearing, roughly equivalent to the high G sharp note. There are certain sound frequencies we know affect humans in specific ways. For example, infrasound below 20 hertz can cause feelings of anxiety or fear even when we can't consciously hear it. Low frequency noises around 40 to 80 hertz can resonate within bodily organs. High pitch sounds around 2000 to 5000 hertz grab our attention because this is the range where human speech consonants occur. But does 852 hertz specifically have unique properties for focus and attention? To answer that, we need to look at the origins of these claims. The Solfeggio Frequency's Origin Story The modern interest in 852 hertz stems from what are called the Solfeggio Frequencies, a set of specific tones that allegedly date back to ancient Gregorian chants. According to this narrative, these sacred frequencies were used in medieval religious music, but were lost until their rediscovery in the 1970s by Dr. Joseph Puello. As the story goes, Puello claimed to have received divine guidance to examine the book of Numbers in the Bible, where he found a pattern relating to the numbers 3, 6, and 9. Using a numerological practice called Pythagorean Skyne, he derived six frequencies, 396 hertz, 417 hertz, 528 hertz, 639 hertz, 741 hertz, and 852 hertz. Each frequency was assigned specific healing properties. For example, 396 hertz allegedly helps remove fear and guilt, while 528 hertz is claimed to repair DNA and perform miracles. Our focus, 852 hertz, is described as awakening intuition and helping return to spiritual order. The origin story was popularized in a 1998 book called Healing Codes for the Biological Apocalypse by Leonard Horowitz and Joseph Puello. However, this is where we encounter our first red flag, historical and scientific scrutiny. When we examine the historical claims about solfeggio frequencies, serious problems emerge. Medievalists and music historians have found no evidence that ancient Gregorian chants used these specific frequencies. In fact, Standardized musical tuning, as we know it today, where A equals 440 Hz, wasn't established until much later. 
The Shanahan Professor of Music History at Boston University notes, there's simply no historical evidence for these specific frequencies being used in medieval music, nor for them being lost as claimed. The whole narrative appears to be a modern creation retrofitted onto history. The numerological method used to describe these frequencies has no basis in acoustics or neuroscience. The practice of reducing numbers until they form a single digit, for example, 852 equals 8 plus 5 plus 2 equals 15 equals 1 plus 5 equals 6, is a form of mystical numerology with no scientific foundation. Even more telling is that before the 20th century, precise frequency measurement in Hertz wasn't possible or standardized, making the claim that ancient civilizations precisely tuned to 852 Hertz historically impossible. What science actually says about sound in the brain. While the specific claims about 852 Hertz lack scientific support, sound and music do have genuine measurable effects on the brain. This is where it gets interesting and more nuanced. Numerous studies have shown that certain types of music and sound can affect concentration, emotional states, and even some cognitive functions. However, these effects aren't tied to specific frequencies, but rather broad characteristics of the sound, such as 1. Rhythm and tempo. Steady, moderately paced music around 60 beats per minute can induce a state of relaxed alertness conducive to focus. 2. Complexity. Simple, predictable sounds without lyrics typically allow for better concentration than complex or vocal music. 3. Familiarity. Novel sounds capture attention, while familiar background sounds can fade from consciousness awareness. 4. Personal preference. Music you enjoy can boost mood and motivation, indirectly enhancing performance on certain tasks. 5. Ambient noise level. Moderate background noise around 70 decibels has been shown to enhance creative thinking in some individuals. Dr. Jessica Gran, a cognitive neuroscientist specializing in music perception, explains, The effects of music on cognition are real but highly individualized. There's no evidence that one specific frequency affects all brains the same way. What helps one person focus might distract another. Binaural Beats Closer to Science Many 852 Hz recordings are actually presented as binaural beats, a phenomenon where slightly different frequencies played in each ear supposedly entrain the brain to the difference between those two frequencies. For example, if 852 Hz plays in one ear, 842 Hz in the other, the brain allegedly entrains to a 10 Hz frequency associated with alpha brain waves and relaxation. This has more scientific plausibility than single frequency claims. Research has shown that bioral beats can influence brainwave patterns in laboratory settings. A 2018 meta-analysis published in the Journal of Psychology Research found modest evidence of binaural beat exposure can affect aspects of cognition and mood. However, even here the evidence is preliminary. Dr. Masha Godden, a professor at North Central University, cautions, while there are some promising studies on binaural beats, the evidence isn't strong enough to make definitive claims about improving ADHD symptoms or dramatically enhancing focus. More importantly, even if binaural beats have measurable effects, these effects aren't specific to 852 Hz or any particular frequency. They depend on the difference between the frequencies presented to each ear. The Placebo Effect and Expectation One explanation for the thousands of positive testimonials about 852 Hz may be the powerful placebo effect. When we expect a treatment to work, our brains can produce real physiological changes that align with these expectations. Research consistently shows that placebo effects can be remarkably powerful, especially for subjective experiences like focus, creativity, and mood. If someone believes 852 Hz will help them concentrate, their brain may be more focused simply because they expect it to. Dr. Robert Satori, a neuroscientist at McGill University's Montreal Neurological Institute, explains. The expectation that something will help you focus can itself enhance focus through increased attention and altered brain activity. This doesn't mean the frequency itself has no effect, but it suggests user testimonials alone aren't reliable evidence. This doesn't mean people are imagining benefits, so the changes they experience can be real, but the cause may be their expectations rather than something inherent to the 852 Hz frequency itself. ADHD specifics, what we know. Claims that 852 Hertz specifically helps with ADHD symptoms warrant special attention. ADHD involves differences in brain structure, function, and neurotransmitter activity, particularly involving dopamine and norepinephrine systems. While no peer-reviewed studies have specifically examined 852 Hertz for ADHD, there is some research on sound-based interventions. 
Some studies suggest that certain types of background music may help some individuals with ADHD focus better on tasks requiring sustained attention. White noise has shown promise for improving cognitive performance in some people with ADHD, possibly by providing consistent sensory input that helps regulate an understimulated attention system. Neurofeedback training, which sometimes uses sound, has shown mixed results for ADHD symptoms. Dr. Russell Barkley, a leading ADHD researcher, notes, many people with ADHD report benefits from background sound while working, but responses vary greatly between individuals. What works is highly personalized. There's no universal sound frequency that helps everyone with ADHD. Why some people genuinely might benefit. Despite the lack of specific evidence for 852 Hertz, there are several legitimate reasons why some individuals might genuinely benefit from listening to these tracks. One, consistent background sound. The steady, non-distracting nature of many 852 Hertz tracks may provide just enough sensory input to occupy parts of the brain that might otherwise become distracted. Two, ritual and structure. Using the same sound consistently creates a work ritual that signals to the brain it's time to focus. Three, digital detox. Listening to these tracks often means putting away other distractions and committing to a focused session. Four, relaxation response. The gentle, consistent tones may trigger a relaxation response that reduces stress and anxiety, indirectly improving focus. Five, self-selection. People who benefit most from these sounds are more likely to leave positive reviews and continue using them, creating a selection bias in testimonials. Cognitive neuroscientist Dr. Daniel Levitin suggests what matters most isn't the exact frequency, but whether the sound creates an optimal environment for your particular brain to focus. For some people, that might be 852 Hertz tracks. For others, classical music. And for still others, complete silence. The commercialization factor. Another aspect worth considering is the commercial incentive behind many 852 Hertz claims. A booming industry has developed around these frequencies, including premium apps, specialized headphones, online courses, and coaching programs, some costing hundreds or even thousands of dollars. This commercialization creates strong incentives to overstate benefits and understate scientific uncertainty. Many websites selling these products cite studies that either don't exist or don't actually support the specific claims being made. Marketing expert Sarah Johnson notes, The wellness industry excels at taking scientific concepts with a kernel of truth and amplifying them into miraculous claims. Terms like frequency, resonance, and brain waves sound scientific enough to be plausible, but vague enough to avoid rigorous scrutiny. This doesn't mean all providers are being deliberately deceptive. Many genuinely believe in what they're offering, but consumers should be aware that financial incentives can cloud objective assessment of evidence. Conclusion. So what's the verdict on 852 Hertz for focus, ADHD, and stress? The evidence doesn't support the specific claims that 852 Hertz has unique properties for enhancing focus or treating ADHD, the historical narrative about ancient solfeggio frequencies appears to be largely fictional, and there's no neurological mechanism by which this particular frequency would affect all brains similarly. However, this doesn't mean people who report benefits are wrong about their experiences. Sound and music genuinely can affect focus, mood, and productivity, just not in the specific universal way that 852 Hertz proponents claim. The benefits likely come from more general principles of how sound affects attention, combined with the expectation effects and the power of consistent focus rituals. If you find 852 Hertz recordings helpful for your concentration and mood, there's no harm in continuing to use them. But be skeptical of extraordinary claims and expensive products promising dramatic results based solely on this frequency. The most effective sound environment for focus is ultimately personal. Some people with ADHD concentrate best with background noise, others in silence. Some focus better with nature sounds, others with ambient music. Finding what works for your unique brain is more important than any specific frequency. As neuroscientist Dr. Nina Krauss puts it, our brains aren't passive receivers of sound, but active interpreters influenced by experience, expectations, and individual differences. The relationship between sound and brain function is real and powerful, just more complex and personalized than a single magical frequency could ever be.